Well, when we talk about the Monroe Doctrine, that has been practiced for decades. Later, there's also what you call the Bush Doctrine, mainly to establish uh, uh, liberal democracies, uh, particularly in the greater Middle East, so that things will change in that region and beyond. Now, you also see faults in that kind of thinking. How do you see the evolution of thinking from Monroe Doctrine to Bush Doctrine and to where we are today in terms of how the U.S. is looking at the world and with what kind of principle and guiding theories it is facing the world? Well, there's a fundamental difference between uh, the Monroe Doctrine and the Bush Doctrine. Uh, the Monroe Doctrine was strategic in nature and it had to do with keeping distant great powers out of the Western Hemisphere. The Bush Doctrine was, as you described it, it was a doctrine that was designed to get the United States to run around the world promoting democracy. And it mainly focused on the Middle East. But as everyone in Beijing knows and everyone in Moscow knows, the United States was also interested in regime change in China and in Russia. During the unipolar moment, the United States was deeply committed to a global version of the Bush Doctrine. Mm -hmm. And countries like China, like Russia, and countries in the Middle East great res greatly resented that because they thought it was a violation of their sovereignty. Now, you ask, where are we today? The fact is that we've left the unipolar moment behind. There are two new great powers in the system, China, which is effectively a peer competitor of the United States, and Russia. So what's happened is that great power politics has taken over, and the United States has actually lost its uh, interest in regime change. We're not interested in regime change with regard to China anymore. What we're interested in is containing China. This is another way of saying great power politics has replaced the Bush Doctrine.